How can you make sure you agree with your customer for the amount of money owed at any moment? That's the reason why QuickBooks Online allows you to print or email customer statements. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. A customer statement is a document that we periodically give to customers who owe us money. Why? Do we give a customer statement to our customers? Well, first, to make sure that we agree with the customer what the balance is exactly as of the specific statement date. Secondly, to make sure we agree with the customer regarding all the transactions that have been recorded. This helps us reconcile any differences in our records from the customer records regarding the balance or the transactions between the statement dates. And it's like a legal declaration or assertion making sure the customer knows what we assert they must pay. So what's on a customer statement? Well, the declared balance as of the specific date listed on the statement the currently open invoices in their open or unpaid amount, a list of all transactions between the start and finish date of the statements, and the balance forward, which could also be called the running balance after each transaction. Now there is a very important please note. A statement does not have to be monthly. It can simply be whatever the agreement is between you and your customer. For example, if you have a hundred transactions each week where many of them are invoices and many of them are payments, you might want to send out a statement each week rather than each month so that you can stop and reconcile with your customer to make sure you agree with all the previous transactions before you engage in any new transactions. Now, the second note is very important when you're interacting with QuickBooks Online in the interface to make a customer statement. The customer's email address must be in the customer records, and I'll show you how this will affect the creation of the statements in QuickBooks Online. For example, let's give Alan each type of the three different statements listed a moment ago between January 1 and January 31 of 2017 in our little story. To do this, you open the New Transaction menu. Either click on the top left where it says New, or if you don't have that, go to the top right and click the plus sign close to the cogwheel. Either one will open the same choices in the New Transaction menu. In this menu, go to the column that says Other and click Statement. Now in this window, the reason why you do not see Alan is because Alan does have the email address in his permanent records. Notice the only uh, customers that are showing are the customers who are missing an email address. If I click statements that are available for customers over here, now I see every customer that I can possibly send a statement to. Notice Alan's email address, this is mine just for an example, does show up here. Now, you can type in email addresses for customers here, but it will not be permanent. I will show you later how to make the email address permanent so it shows up here every time. If you type it in here, it will only work on the current statement that you're sending out right now. So, let's follow the directions, and first, we'll send a statement that has only the open invoices as of the statement date, 
and we already decided that the statement date will be January 31 of 2017 because 2017 is our little story. Okay, so all you have to do is put open item. It will only go back, you know, one year from the statement date that you declare here. Now, when I click apply, okay, it has to be to just the customers whom you want to see the statement for. So again, I have to click here and remove the check mark from the customers whom I don't want to see their statement. I only want to leave Alan checked off after clicking Statements Available 3. And again, I want the open items as of this date. When I click Preview, you can save and send because you do have Alan's email address. But when I click Preview, you can see that these three would look exactly like Alan's open invoice report. Here's the original. It's, in fact, it's better. Here's the original amount, and here's the amount open as of the cutoff date of the statement that we put. And of course, you could print this and send it in snail mail, or you could click Save and Send, and it would send it to the email address listed here. Now, let's do a different type of statement. If we change it to Balance Forward, but leave the dates the same. By the way, this will not, the start date and end date will not necessarily affect what's on the statement if you choose this statement type balance forward. But just for good measure, let's put January 1 of 2017 to January 1 of, or January 31 of 2017. Okay, just got to make this 2017. Okay, now start date and end date, click apply. Now again, you have to click the statements that are available and remove those whom you're not sending it to. Now that it looks the way we need it to look, we can preview it and you can see that not only is this every transaction between the start and finish date, but notice the balance was 3000 Then we had an invoice for 3900 The balance went up to 6900 Then we had an invoice for 2100 The balance went up to 9000 Then we made a payment after that, so the balance went down to 6000 and so on. So this type of statement shows the running balance between the statement dates. And the last type of statement that we could send is a transaction statement. And again, leave the from and to date for, and leave the same statement date. And when we preview this one, oh, excuse me, when we preview this one, make sure you're only choosing the particular customer whom you want to preview it for. And when you take a look again, it has something different. This column is now not the running balance. This column is the amount applied to each invoice, and it even lists the sales receipts. For example, invoice number one it was completely paid off, but invoice number five only has $1,000 applied to it. Invoice number seven has no money applied to it. And of course, sales receipts are always paid off, but it is included in the statement because it is, they are transactions that happen between those dates between you and the customer. Look, invoice number 10 has $380 applied. So the combination of all three of these types of statements give the customer the clearest possible information regarding what is owed and why it is owed from the customer. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, the email in the statement window is not permanent. You would have to use the customer records to put it permanently. So if I wanted to email the statement to a customer, I would open it up again, just like you did before, and notice these two customers don't have an email address in their permanent records. But if I wanted to mail out just for Betty, 
I could, in this window, I could put Betty's email address, whatever it may be, and only in that case, if I click Print Preview, it will allow me to preview this statement. And if I click Save and Send, it will show me a preview of what the statement will look like, and I can send it. And the reason I can send it is because I had put the email address here. But even if I click Save and I send it, unfortunately, when I come back to the window, you will see that it will not remember Betty's email address and it will still be missing according to QuickBooks Online. What you would have to do is you would have to click Sales, and then you'd have to click Customers, and then you'd have to Edit Betty. You would have to click here. Actually, you would have to, you would have to edit the customer's record by clicking on the customer name here. Okay? Then click Edit. This would bring you back to the original window where you put in customer information earlier in the course. And what you would have to do is put the email address in the top right. Betty at Betty.com. Now that's not a real email address, but it will save. And that means if you reopen the statement window, you can see now only Candy does not have an email address. And if I click Statements Available, you can see it remembered permanently the email address for you to save and send the statement.